Hey guys, Daily Tech here, bringing you my continued search to find the very best way to mount the PS Move controller to your headset for the best possible head tracking. This video is part two of three of the series, and as promised, today we'll be ripping open a PlayStation Move controller, and I can't wait. So in my previous video, we explored a few different ways we can mount the controller to the headset and get a little bit better tracking. Now you might remember that no matter where we mounted it, we ended up with a few different little problems. However, we did make some really good progress. Now if you did miss the video, I have a link to it in the top right of the screen, so you can go ahead and check that out. But for now, let's get tearing this thing open and seeing how it ticks. Okay, so here's a look at the controller. Now you'll notice that there's four screws on the back that you can undo. The best thing to use for those is just a Phillips head jeweler screwdriver. So let's go ahead and pull all four of those out. Now when opening up the controller, make sure you do that carefully because there's two ribbon cables inside that you'll need to be careful of. One's going to the trigger of your controller, the other one's going to the LED of the bulb. we'll need to disconnect the one that's going to the trigger. You'll need to grab the cable as close as you can to the board and gently pull it straight outwards until it comes out. You'll also notice that the bulb is going to be pretty loose at this point, so you might as well just pop that off and put it off to the side. Once the trigger part of the controller is off, go ahead and put that off to the side as well. Now what we'll do is put the bulb back onto the LED and find a good spot to mount it. Now I found that the bulb does fit really nicely into the end of the controller. So I decided to put it there and give that a shot. Now looking at the headset, I was thinking about laying it across the front again to see if that would work. But I remember it rolling around too much and I didn't want that to happen, especially with the controller open like this. So I decided to go back to the vertical way that we had before. But I figured that now this time the bulb is sticking straight up, so it'll have a much better view. So let's fire up out of ammo again and give it a shot. So just to hold the bulb there temporarily, I wrapped it in some electrical tape just so I could test it out. So let's grab the rifle again and see what we can do. But back in the range, everything feels pretty good. Scope's pretty straight. Not too much shaking around at all. Things generally feel pretty smooth here. Now one thing I did notice looking at the video as well, is that the bulb is almost facing downwards a little bit too much. So if I do look down, the cameras behind me probably won't see me very well. But when looking up or looking straight, everything seems to be pretty good. And my gun's switching out a little bit here because I am standing right in the corner. But otherwise, the head tracking is pretty good. But like I said, that bulb is a little bit too low and I do want to get that up a little bit higher. So let's get rid of that electrical tape and see what we can do about getting this on a different angle. I carefully remove the tape, making sure not to pull the ribbon cable that's attached to the bulb. Now I really don't know what angle to use exactly, but somewhere in between the two positions I tried before should be just fine. If you look closely inside, you can see that you can still get three good points of contact when you angle it. So I decide just to pick an angle and go with it. I start by putting a decent amount of glue on the front part and work it in a little bit. Then I go ahead and put a bit more on either side. Then I just give it a bit of time so it can set. Next, I decide I want to reinforce it a little bit more, so I get myself a toothpick and cut off one of the sharp ends. From there, position the toothpick along the front to hold the angle on the bulb and hot glue it to the bottom. I give it a sec to dry a little bit, and then once it's set, I cut the top of the toothpick off to the proper size and glue that as well. I'll also add just a bit more glue to both points to make sure it holds properly.
Now here's a closer look at it. Notice how it's about a 45 degree angle now? As you can see, this is holding nice and well and shaking it is no problem at all. I now notice that the battery is loose in there, so I decide to wrap a piece of tape around it to make sure it doesn't fall out while playing. Then I proceed to wrap some tape around the end to help secure the bulb further and to also cover up some of that glue. I also decided to put some tape over the toothpick because although it serves a good purpose, it looks a bit ridiculous. Now I'm optimistic. Let's try this one more time. Alright, so I got the controller strapped back to my head. We're back into the game now and let's go grab that gun and see how it looks. Now the aiming again is pretty smooth just as I expected. And hitting the targets is not so bad except for my crappy aiming. Also looking at the video too, I can see that the bulb is in plain view at all times in the camera. So I think this one's a winner. So even though we found a great way to mount the controller and I don't think there's much room for improvement there, there's still one more thing that I want to try out. In the future, the PS Move service might bring an option to have a virtual controller attached. Which means actually having the controller on your head for head tracking won't even be necessary anymore. For this reason, I'm going to try to get the PS Move service to track this ping pong ball. This will open up loads of options for head tracking, so be sure not to miss it. Now I should be getting the LED that I need to get this done in the mail over the next couple weeks, so be sure to keep an eye out for part 3 of the series. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.